Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Sam Crack, and if you remember from last time, the steering wheel airbag isn't the only safety component missing from the pizza car right now. There's a few others. Both seat belts are completely removed, and if we look down here, the driver's side knee airbag has also been removed because it deployed in the accident. Right here is the driver's steering wheel airbag. Right here is the knee airbag. Now, after an accident, it's obvious a lot of these safety components have to be completely replaced and they're very expensive. One airbag for this Domino's pizza car, it runs about three to four hundred dollars used. That's just for one. It's one of the main reasons I bought back there in the distance the disgustingly dirty donor car. It had all the parts I needed and for about fifteen hundred dollars I bought an entire car I was able to harvest the parts off of it and of course if you guys are following my channel or the Domino's pizza car build you know that I've already taken apart the interior of this car here to go ahead and replace all those airbags and seat belts that have become no longer usable due to the accident that it was in earlier this year I made a video showing an auction car I had bought it was the money pit Jetta and how the resellers of that car cut the airbags completely out of the ceiling and tucked the remainder of the airbag fabric back under the headliner so that I had no clue that the airbags were even missing. This was obviously done because it takes a good amount of time to remove a car's headliner and actually go and physically replace the airbags. And number two, as we've already discussed, it's very costly to do so. Now, pretty much all modern cars, there's airbags and safety features that we can't even see, like what we just talked about, a curtain airbag. Or how about a side seat airbag? What happens if the shop repairing your car is not the most honest and they decide to save themselves a little bit of money, they're just gonna leave those items out of the car. Well, your airbag light should turn on, right? Using this scanner and scanning the inflatable restraint sensing and diagnostic module, which is basically short for the airbag computer, uh, we can look at the trouble codes here and it will let us know basically every little thing that's wrong with the car. If you look on top here, it shows that there are eight codes causing that airbag light to be on. And we can go through the list here, but it's all the stuff we've already talked about. The driver's steering wheel airbag missing, the knee airbag, the seat belts not being hooked up, all of that stuff. These systems are really smart. Not only do they tell you you have a problem, it goes as far to show you where the problem is in your car. Like I said, we have eight different issues with this car, but right here in my hands, you probably can't even see it. I have a resistor. This resistor cost me around five cents. And I'm gonna show you how scam artists are using these to shut off airbag lights in cars. Right here is my knee airbag harness. Right here is the tiny little resistor. In each airbag or safety system, harness should be two pins. We're just gonna take this resistor, I've went ahead and bent it, and I'm going to just push it in place so that it's making contact with the two pins in there. I'll give it a good turn and I'll make things a little bit snugger. And that's it. Now I'm obviously just taking these harnesses and in this example shoving the pins in, but what people have uh, known to do when they're really trying to hide things and they want this to be a long-term fix, they'll actually cut the wires here and solder or just directly connect the resistor to the wires. That way it never comes apart here. This is kind of shaky and we're going to find out uh, how effective it really ends up being. But I do anticipate that once we turn the car on and do a code clearing uh, that you're going to see that airbag light turn off. Now you guys might wonder why I am doing this and really it's for a few reasons. Number one, some of the most frequent questions I get are regarding repairing the airbag system. A lot of people are concerned that if they're buying a car that was previously in an accident or a rebuilt car, that maybe the repair wasn't satisfactory enough. And, I mean, it could be the case. Now, I don't want to say that a lot of people are practicing this, but there have been a few instances of people buying cars or even just having their own cars repaired at a professional body shop and finding out down the road that they didn't repair the seatbelt or the airbag at all. Instead, they just stuck one of these resistors in the harness like I'm showing you right now. So if you look over here, the power on the ground is connected back to our battery. You can tell that we have a light on in the pizza oven, which means there's power to the car. We have some lights on the dashboard. We still have our airbag light. It's right there here. Let me get you a better look at it, okay? But we do not have any airbags installed. We still have the seat missing, which has the seat airbag in it. That knee airbag is out. Everything is still out of the car, but we have put 
resistors in every single harness. There are resistors everywhere. It took us only about five minutes to do that. Now let's check out our code reader and we're going back. It says right here the inflatable restraint system and we're going to scan for codes on this car. Remember before we had eight codes. We now only have one code and it's telling me that loop stage two, so there's two stages here, one and two, one of those resistors is not connected very well. So I'm going to mess with it and then I'm going to come right back. The airbag light, I'm fighting with it coming on and off and the code that it's throwing is just one. Remember we had eight before, now it's just got one. It's telling us the driver's steering wheel airbag is having a problem. One of these two resistors is not making a perfect connection. So in order to rectify this situation, let's go ahead and actually replace the steering wheel airbag in this car. We'll put it back in and we'll leave all the resistors in place elsewhere and that should permanently turn our light off. <laughs> All right, so we have our replacement driver steering wheel airbag in, left everything the way it was, still with the resistors in place. This should definitely get rid of our airbag light at this point. All right, so our airbag light is still off. We're going to go and scan the codes here one more time, make sure that there are none, and then we'll turn the engine on and confirm that our airbag light stays off with multiple safety components missing. No diagnostic trouble codes. Now we're gonna actually turn the engine to the car on. And we don't wanna keep it running for long because I don't have the cooling system or anything hooked up. But as you can see, there's still no airbag light in this car whatsoever. Engine is running. Again, we're not gonna keep it running for very long. There's just resistors in here. A resistor for the anchor. There's resistors on the other side. The knee airbag is still missing. So there you have it. A few five cents resistors tricked the very sophisticated SRS system in this car and it will do it on pretty much every make and model. If you are skeptical that this is actually occurring, check out this Reddit post and I'll also link it in the description box below. The author claims that after his BMW was in an accident and he got it back from the repair shop, he found that they actually cut an airbag wiring harness and wired a resistor in place. Now for all you guys that think I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this car with the resistors in it and tuck in some of the components and all that stuff. Here's the donor car right here. You can see I've disassembled a lot of the front because we're using some of the body panels from it. But also back here, I've got my knee airbag that I took from the car. This right here with the zip tie on it, that's a seat belt that I pulled from the donor car. I've got the anchors from the donor car right here. These are all good pieces. And well, I'm gonna put the interior back together the way it was intended to be and so that the safety system is completely intact. Now the example I provided you guys today is a bit extreme and obviously most repair shops aren't doing this sort of stuff, but we all know one or two guys that are eventually discovered will taint the entire automotive repair industry because of nonsense like this. Let me show you a kind of realistic scenario how some people think they could probably get away with shoving a five cents resistor into one of your safety components and you really never ever telling. Right here I have an entire seatbelt assembly out of the Domino's car. This seatbelt assembly has been locked up due to the collision. Now it is a dual stage seatbelt. It has a electric charge right here. It also has one in the anchor on the floor. And what happens when the signal is sent to those electric charges, it blows a little packet of pellets here. You can hear it. If I shake it a little bit, those go and lock up. And then on the anchor itself, it will explode an electric charge and actually bring the belt downward to make sure it's very secure on you and you don't fly forward in the accident. So here's our locked up seatbelt. Theoretically, what you could do is disassemble the retractor unit here, get it to spin again. That's fairly simple, but you still gotta plug it in. And well, if you don't wanna do any extra work, you just go ahead and put a resistor in the harness that this would normally plug into. There goes one error code. Now we move over to the pretensioner and the anchor. Again, this one has already locked up. You can even see where it pulled in here during the accident. They could just remove this piece entirely 
entirely or they could install it back in the car without repairing the electric charge here and use another resistor. What you would have is what seems to be a seatbelt that would work but has no safety mechanism built in. Now guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also, make sure you're subscribed so you can watch me put together the rest of the Domino's DXP car. If you have any questions for me whatsoever, be sure to check out the description box below. My email address is in there and also my Instagram is on there. I try and answer every single one of your questions. Feel free to comment down below because I try to read every single one of those as well. Guys, thanks a whole lot for watching and I will catch you very soon.